The Australian military has been at the front line of many conflicts, including both world wars. It has the ability to make a difference against such enemies as Imperial Japan, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. So you would think that taking out a few animals wouldn't be a problem. After all, animals have no planes or guns. Yet, one of Australia's biggest military defeats came at the hands of a bunch of large, flightless birds. Not once, not twice, but multiple times over a one-month span in 1932. This is a story of Australia's Great Emu War. To get a sense of how this started, we have to go back to the end of the First World War. Australia was part of the victorious Allied powers, and soldiers were happy to come back home, and many were discharged back into civilian life. But many of them had trouble figuring out what to do. They needed work, so the Australian government created a soldier settlement scheme, where they gave plots of land to around 5,000 veterans so that they could earn a living as farmers. Many of them were given land in Western Australia, far from civilization. Farming this land was going to be tough. Drought was a problem, and anything that did grow was eaten up by emus. What exactly are emus? Known as the second largest flightless bird in the world after the ostrich, they have long necks and feathers just like ostriches. They were native to the central part of Australia and pretty useless. Their biggest talents were mostly mating and eating, and they ate a lot. This became a problem for the veterans turned farmers. They were losing their crops to a bunch of weird looking birds. While they obviously knew how to use guns and killed thousands of emus over time, they kept coming back. The farmers needed help. They could have approached the Minister of Agriculture, but they didn't trust him. Being former soldiers, they did trust the Minister of Defense, Sir George Pierce. With their experience in the First World War, the farmers asked Pierce to supply them with machine guns. Pierce agreed under certain conditions. They were to be used by active military personnel that he would provide, while the farmers would be responsible for housing and feeding the soldiers and paying for the ammo. He saw this as a perfect training opportunity. As well, he sent camera crews as a PR stunt, showing the Australian people how the country is taking care of its veterans. The stage was set for the most decisive war in Australian military history, except in a way that nobody expected. The first battle started on the 2nd of November 1932. Pierce put Major GPW Meredith in charge, leading only two soldiers into battle. After all, this was going to be easy, right? As Meredith and his team set out that day, they found a group of 50 emus. They took out their machine guns, capable of spitting out 500 to 600 rounds per minute. They took aim and fired. The emus scattered everywhere. One thing that Meredith and his team did not count on was the emu's ridiculous speed. They could run up to 50 kilometers per hour, and run they did. At the end of the first battle, no more than 12 emus were killed. The army drew first blood, but the emus won the battle. Meredith realized that he needed a better strategy. Regrouping with his team, he decided an ambush was a better idea. Two days later, he tried again, this time with a group of around 1,000 emus. Again, they took aim and fired. But the emus were ready. They scattered just like before, to the point where the machine guns jammed, allowing for an easy escape. Despite a much larger target, once again, only about 12 emus were killed. When asked why things were going so badly, Meredith explained, the emus have proved that they are not as stupid as they are usually considered to be. Each mob has its leader, who keeps watch while his fellows busy themselves with the wheat. At the first suspicious sign, he gives the signal, and dozens of heads stretch out of a crop. A few birds will take fright, starting a headlong stampede for the scrub, the leader always remaining until his followers have reached safety. Seeing how fast the emus were, Meredith had an idea. Let's use cars. He would order the machine guns to be mounted on top of trucks 
If the emus flee, they can just chase after them. This turned out to be a much worse idea. Due to the rugged terrain of Western Australia, this made for a bumpy ride. The person at the helm ended up being too busy, trying to maintain balance and control to get a good shot, allowing the team to chase after just one target at a time. This strategy didn't manage to kill a single emu, which pissed off the truck driver so much that he decided to just run over one of them. He hit and killed an emu, but this led him to lose control, hit a ditch, and plow into a nearby fence. By this point, the media was having a field day, and the public's reaction was mainly ridicule. The PR stunt that Pierce had hoped for had turned into a national embarrassment. Finally, the emu war was called off, barely a month after it had started. At the end, 9,860 bullets had been fired, killing only about 986 emus out of nearly 20,000. Over the years, other farmers have asked the government to spearhead a similar emu call, but for obvious reasons, the government never tried anything like this again. If you found this video interesting, please hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe for more nerd facts. You can also support us on Patreon where you can help us make more videos just like these.